All right, so welcome everybody to the first episode of Singapore PHP User Group podcast recording. <laughs> Hello, I'm Michael, and we have us with us here. Hey, say, your, say your name, lah. Hey, say your name, lah. Oh, uh, Hui Ren. <laughs> Hello, I'm Yuta. Hi, Yuta. Zhang here. Cool. So these are all the uh, uh, PHP peoples. Hang out in Singapore, and we're recording the first episode of our podcast. Uh, so this is kind of experimental. So the first time we're trying this. So uh, if it doesn't work out, then eh, but we'll go try, see how how it goes. We got a few kind of an interesting lineup of topics for today. So uh, we've got like uh, <coughs> some interesting topics, and we'll be covering them right now. Um, first up, uh, we'll be talking a little bit about. Uh, Zion will be sharing with us a little bit about um, how the evolution of the Zen framework. <laughs> how about that? Cool. Okay. Oh, God. oh so you're still showing the screen, now. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, so, uh, to kick off, uh, twenty twenty, just to find out what's the state of our uh, PHP in uh, twenty twenty. So the biggest news that uh, they have come about uh, is uh, Zen was uh, acquired last year again by uh, Perforce. Uh, so now we are looking at the Zen uh, web page at the about page. So if you scroll down to all the way to the bottom, you wow. find that in two thousand and fifteen, Zen Technologies was acquired by Roadwave Software, and then two thousand nineteen, which was just last year. Roadwave was acquired by Perforce, <laughs> and now the company becomes Zen by Perforce. Uh, for those who are not in the know, um, Zen actually is uh, named after the two co-founders, uh, Andy Goodman, which is the Andy in Zen, and uh, Ziv uh, Suraski, which is uh, Z-E in uh, Zen. So what happened was um, Rasmus actually uh, was the creator of PHP. And uh, later on, they have to refine it. Uh, I think it was around PHP three. Mm-hmm. So that was, that's where we got the Zen engine. So Zen engine is the main engine that's running behind the uh, PHP. Um, so the question comes out uh, after these two acquisitions. Uh, what will become the future of uh, PHP? So uh, first up, we talk about Zen framework. So uh, on the third tab. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Cool. So Zen framework is one of the many PHP frameworks uh, around, one of the major ones. Uh, some other compar- comparable ones are Symfony and uh, uh, and the uh, latest key on the block, Laravel. 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 Yeah. Well, not um, quite late. I mean, it's not, okay, fine. It's been around for a couple yeah. of years, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so quite the, latest is a bit of a... <laughs> okay, so just to give some, uh, perspe- uh, some personal background, uh, on Zen framework, so uh, the first time I came up about it was about 2011. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was working in an events company then, and my manager actually asked, asked me to choose a framework because everything was written in the uh, pure plain PHP, which uh, uh, had a lot of uh, monkey coding. So he wanted a framework to make things uh, clean. So at the time, there was no Laravel at, uh, at all. There was a Cake, PHP, uh, Coigniter, the Symphony, and Zen. So at the point of time, uh, after some research, I chose Zen. Although at the time, the documentation was much worse than Symfony. <laughs> Symfony was actually a uh, good contender at the time. So the rationale for choosing Zen framework, I had two reasons. First reason was Zen framework at the time, they had uh, certification. Mm. So you can actually get a Zen framework certification. Uh, so for me, I thought it will be useful for my HR. So at any one time, we can say, uh, in when you send out a job posting, just uh, choose look look out for Zen Framework Certified Engineers, so that will make the recruitment easier. The second reason was uh, I was saying Zen Framework is by Zen, mm-hmm. so Zen is the main company, the main driving force behind PHP. So as long as uh, PHP is, is around, right, Zen Framework should still be around. <laughs> so True. my concern was that. I didn't want to choose a framework that was here today and gone tomorrow. So, uh, so even like many years after I leave the company, uh, they could still maintain it. So now it has come to a point where 
uh, Zen is uh, Zen framework is living Zen has less Zen. The two co-founders of uh, Zen have also left Zen. So now that leaves the question on the what is the future of Zen, the Zen engine and the Zen framework. Mm. So now I'll talk about Zen framework first. So Zen framework has uh, moved on. He has changed his name to Laminas. Uh, he has come under the Linux Foundation. So mm. that was a uh, part of a uh, migration uh, work done by the team lead, Matthew Wilfini. He was a project lead for Zen Framework. Uh, and he actually has a blog about it. Uh, I think the part, the, I want to tap from oh. Zen to... Uh, uh, from Zen... The next one. Oh, yeah, this okay, one. This one. Uh, this ah, one. Okay, cool. <coughs> <coughs> Uh, so the Linux Foundation actually hosts a lot of other projects which I can't remember at this point of time. Um, so it has been winning Laminas uh, together with all the other uh, uh, components. So this is so called the future of uh, Zen Framework. It's still around but it's under a different name. But the whole uh, development team has actually moved out of Zen already. They have wow. left Zen. So uh, <coughs> uh, that brings to the next question of the Zen engine. So if you look at um, the fourth tab. Okay, wait, wait. Uh, hang on. There you go, this one? Yeah. Uh, this one? Yeah, okay. this one. Uh, this is uh, Ziff. Okay, uh, the next one, the WordPress yeah. one. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, so let's start with uh, the co-founders. Yep. Of Zen, uh, Andy Goodman's, uh, where the Andy start comes from. So, <laughs> 2016. In 2015, Zen was acquired by Roadwave Software, and uh, Andy Goodman uh, decided to leave. So, uh, this was his uh, blog post. Uh, it's posted on the Meetup page as well. So, uh, today, PHP powers about over 80% of the web. Uh, you can find your stats uh, somewhere else. Uh, so we find that actually it's come to a point of time where the community has taken over. So most of PHP is actually still run by community contributors. So it's a uh, stable at this point of time. So this is the blog where he wrote where he left Zen. The mm -hmm. other one is uh, 2018, the fourth time, yep. where Ziv uh, decided to leave Zen after Perforce acquired Roadwave. Uh, including Zen. So uh, he also talked about uh, his team and I, including Dimitri, Matthew, and Enrico. Uh, they'll be leaving the company and looking for new opportunities. So, uh, so now it's, it's just up for a discussion. I'm just giving us some uh, background history. So PHP 8 uh, is still in the pipeline. It's yeah. still run by the PHP community. Uh, although the actual number of core contributors right, is probably the le less than the number of fingers on my hands. <laughs> so uh, it's still very much a community driven development. So at this point of time, just wondering, just bring up for discussion uh, uh, what everyone thinks about the future of uh, Zen. Period. Yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> okay. What's the future of Zen? Uh, I don't know eh. Like I I I use PHP and uh sometimes it says so oh, it's it's powered by Zen engine depending on like which provider. Like some hosts they use like the Zen engine. But like it's uh it has seemed to always been like a more like a they haven't they are they are not really part of what the PHP things I've done so far mm. like I've never really encountered something that I needed that I needed so badly that I had to look into Zen solutions other than for the Zen certs uh, I mean like there's no other company that will do PHP certifications other right. than Zen so yeah other than that uh, on the software side nothing really much is Zen Engine still powering all the PHP uh, imp implementations now, or have they, they take, remo removed that from um, PHP 7? I've always thought it was baked into PHP, isn't it? Yes, it's uh, baked into PHP. So at the very core, it's, uh, you see all the C, 
uh, city libraries. Uh, so I think that was two years back where we had our PHP conference uh, in Asia, in, uh, right held here in Singapore. Mm -hmm. So we had a workshop on the PHP internal. So they show us that actually you see all the constants, all the code inside there, right? It's all uh, named after Zen. It's actually still yeah, very, yeah. very much part of the internals. I see. Yeah. Okay. So Which you wouldn't know if unless you were working on the internals. Uh, Right, which most right. of us don't. <laughs> <laughs> we shall cover a bit later about that. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, how are you? you have you used Zend? Uh, uh, to be honest, or? I've never used Zend. Mm. Yeah, I only use Laravel uh, oh. in my PHP career. So, oh, okay. yeah, but, yeah, but I, when I, uh, when I launch my PHP CLI, uh, it always uh, displays Zend, Zend's something Zen foundation or something Zen technology yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Zen te <laughs> so yeah so it's very related to php itself mm. but i didn't know there are only uh less than 10 maintainer oh yeah the core contributors, core yeah. contributors. Uh, yeah they're yeah. called core contributors mm. Well, my, my, my history with Zen framework and especially for Zen, I used to, I was a Zen certified engineer. I think one of the first oh, yeah. PHP 4 Zen certified engineers in Singapore. So when we, uh, yeah, so it's like we always thought that the Z PHP and Zen, the history has always been quite symbi symbiotic. Mm. So, it, I mean, it's without, without Ziv Zareski, Andy Gutman, I mean, I mean, PHP wouldn't have the extendability and the ability to I mean the, the, the way that it was uh, that they're so famous now and the ability people the ability for people to to create extensions and everything for it I think it's all because of the Zen engine and everything a bit they made that they did to kind of make the the language I think usable and I mean they contribute a lot to the beginning of the of the, of the language right and then um, and then see how Zen has evolved over the years, and up to right now it's like you know. And then it got like acquired twice, so I think I I mean, I feel a bit sad that, that you know that they, they they couldn't have a company like this. I thought it could have it could potentially have the success of something like Red Hat, right? How well then even Red Hat <laughs> is now kind of like. The the biggest poster boy for open source is uh, you know is now an yeah. IBM company right so, I mean, yeah so I guess acquisition is a good way to go as in for for the company to continue growing, um, but then again you do you, one but now that you know that not many of the people in Zen are actually contributing to the core, uh, core libraries and uh, and, and uh, to the main PHP uh, interpreter itself it feels a bit like. What happen, whatever happens to them doesn't really seem to matter. Um, but some of the tools that they built in the past I felt was pretty nice. So I've used uh, things like Zen Encoder to kind of obfuscate uh, oh, yeah, 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 my, yeah. my PHP code. And then before the, the caching thing was was, uh, mm -hmm. was 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 really well done and the, the, the uh, PHP already had, uh, rather Zen had their own Zen... Op cache, I think. Op, op, op cache. cache. Uh, AP cache yeah. and yeah. The yeah. another cache. There's another, there's, there's a few of these things that make PHP run a bit faster, mm -hmm. right? And then I like, the, I like the fact that back then, Zen had that product as a free product, you just install and all that. It was much later when we had app cache and all these other things happening, uh, uh, happening in the PHP uh, open source scene that, that made it, you didn't need that, you didn't need that Product from Zen and more, right? So, mm. I think it, sh it shows the resilience of the of the ecosystem, right? That you can, it's not just one company dominating the whole thing. Um, I personally felt that they probably missed the boat with <laughs> with the editor. So they had a oh, pretty yeah. very nice, they had a pretty nice editor, but then they backed the wrong horse. I feel, <laughs> you know, at, at the point uh, the, initially when the Zen uh, Zen editor came out. Um, it was its own, it's not alone, right? It's yeah, a standalone yeah, software. Yeah, okay, okay. And much later, they became like an extension of Eclipse. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> then, then yeah, like, that, wow. from then onwards, it was like downhill all the way because it's like Eclipse was pretty much on its way down. And now the post, the, the, the best editor out there, uh, you know, like, you, for, I come from JetBrains, you know, like uh, PHP Storm. I think we all use PHP yeah, Storm. And, PHP. Uh, and 
then of course <laughs> VS Code. VS Code, oh, yeah. uh, wow, hardcore, see. Uh, uh, VS Code. Uh, I use yeah. uh, I use uh, text. Sublime text, oh, wow, wow. PHP old, song, old PHP school. Song. Yeah, PHP song. Yeah, uh -huh. still, I'm a pretty much a um, <laughs> uh, JetBrains kind of a person. So yeah, I use all JetBrains products. Anyway, but still, um, but Zen is. I think as a company has continued to, to change and evolve and you know and I think right now I, I, I think I, I like the direction that Zen framework is going uh, even though I'm not a fan of the framework but, but I do like that they're trying to kind of like move away from the Zen legacy mm -hmm. right now they change their name to like Laminas uh, I don't know. Is it is it just a fork or is it like a continuation of the uh, continuation? So actually, right. they moved the whole repo over and they rename a lot of the uh, projects, in, uh, including these uh, other components. Um, so yeah. one thing that Zen framework stands out from the other frameworks is uh, this thing called configuration over convention. Hmm. So for hmm. things like probably Symphony or especially Laravel. If you name your certain, if you name your classes uh, a certain way, uh, and you run the migration, automatically they will create a database tables, uh, everything for you. Everything will automatically uh, uh, come together, hmm. uh, which is very nice for rapid prototype, uh, prototyping. Uh, if you name your variables like this, uh, or you name your database columns like this, uh, automatically everything will be mapped up for you. There's very uh. little configuration for you to do. So it's by convention. Whereas for Zen framework, a lot of things go by configuration. Uh, how you want to map your tables, how you want to map the properties, everything, everything needs to be configured, which is very tedious. But at the end of the day, when you do troubleshooting, right, you know exactly uh, where to find the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a, uh, yeah, it's pros and, pros and cons. Yeah. I, think, I think a lot of the frameworks, modern frameworks out there use the com convention over configuration yeah, yeah. because I think there's always that overhead of like, like configuration uh, tends to be quite um, like each application is a snowflake uh, <laughs> and it's so hard to maintain right and then there's like when you, in, you see you, when coming to a new project which is uh, very configuration based you need to like or oh, figure out what the convention configuration is is used for the company or the conventions used by the company in terms of the configuration mm -hmm. before it can actually become productive. Whereas if you join you will join a company that uses a uh, uh, MVC framework, for example, like Laravel mm -hmm. or Cake PHP, where they follow com conventional config configuration, you can find pretty much everything. Uh, uh, database connectivity. Uh, look at models. Models you'll find all the things there and and views. So they look for the HTML views in the inside the views folder. Um, makes it easier, as you, said, as you said, it makes it easier for you to uh, get onboarded. But again, again, once the application gets a bit too big and unwieldy, you, it's if you find you find you find it's your yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, what yeah. kind of that, that convention is forced onto you, right? And you go like, oh shit, where do I throw this? This thing is really be in the controller. <laughs> they end up having trouble or like what we call fat controllers, where you have like yeah, really yeah, yeah. huge controller files. Like, what the heck? And then then, you, then people start swinging the other way with fat models, and everything is a model. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> then you're like, oh shit, what, what to do now? Yeah, so it's yeah. like, yeah. I you, think you this think? concept is inspired by Ruby on Rails. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, uh, I just started Rails in my job. Oh, and, okay. Uh, yeah, there are, there are many conventions, so uh, sometimes it's hard to understand why it's working. Uh, somehow <laughs> it's working like magic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah it's true. You know how, how it's configured. Right, yeah. so whereas having a framework that is configuration based, you read the configuration file, you pretty much, oh, okay, I know where to, get, where to find this, where to find that, which is pretty much the, uh, what is, what, uh, as what uh, yeah. Zion said, uh, uh, the Zen framework, or right now, Laminas is really m uh, much about, right? Yeah. Do you want to go through a little bit about what, what, what is, uh, what, what, what is the first place that people should go to if you uh, try to learn Laminas right now? Uh, so if you can see the screen right now, there's a uh, uh, website, uh, getlaminas.org. Um, and actually there's a lot of tools, uh, you scroll down a bit uh, over here. So actually, um, Zen framework itself or Laminas as it is known now, is an MVC framework. Hmm. Uh, it's a, what we call a full body framework, it comes with everything. Uh, where else, uh, if you want something lighter, I will actually recommend this uh, Maisio which is the one in the middle. The PSR7. Oh. This one was actually uh, called Zen Expressive. 
Uh, oh. I gave a few thoughts on it before, which nice. was on engineers to IG. So, um, um, for the Zen, uh, for the framework, whichever framework that you choose, right? Normally, your controllers, your models, uh, everything is not uh, portable. So, for example, if I write a model or I write a controller in Zen framework, I cannot port it to Symfony framework or Laravel framework easily. Uh, of, co of course, you won't be doing that uh, every day. Um, then let's say if you're building a REST API endpoint uh, to get a list of products, then one day your man manager says, uh, can I add authentication? Then the next day, the manager say, can I do some logging of the request and response? So all these things, uh, imagine your API has 1,000 endpoints and 1,000 classes. So you'll be modifying 1,000 classes via annotations or extra code to handle all this extra functionality. But for Mazio, it's different. It's using middleware, PSR7. Uh, so imagine it's like Onion. You have a core of Onion, which is your REST API endpoints, the 1,000 endpoints. And then the outer layer, outer layer, I can add one authentication. Let's say I want to log the request or response, I can add another outer layer because every request will go through all the layers to the call and the response will go from the call to all the layers of all back to the outside, back to the user. So uh, it makes it very easy to actually add extra functionality and all the layers taking the same type of request and same kind of uh, and uh, modify the same type of response type. Thanks to PSR 7 and PSR 15, uh, which is another topic for another day. Uh, so <laughs> if you have time, actually, yeah, do try Mazio. It's uh, quite a fantastic uh, uh, tool by uh, Zen Framework. Cool. So, um, so how do I get started? Middleware in minutes. Ooh, okay. Swool. I see, I see a lot of interesting terms here. Swool support for Mazio. What's Swool? I oh. have. I <laughs> I've Oops. seen that somewhere before. Is it uh, templating? Uh, I can't remember. Is it templating? Oh, no, it's, no, the, no, it's your core routines for PHP. Ah, core like, oh, routines. I think someone talked about it in. Uh, just. I think click on the source. The the, uh, the source oh, link. Okay. Uh, I think Ooh, for video. Let's check it out. Yeah, you use. Ah. Uh, uh, if you if you look at so the readme. Oh, then you can click on so so is. Yes, uh, your it's basically a asynchronous PHP framework. Ooh. Ah, yeah. Okay, so okay. you use code routines. There's a few also, like there were a few others as well. That's nice. That's but nice. I forgot their names. <laughs> it's kind of asynchronous PHP, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been around for some time already. Very cool. Yeah, like I the first time routines, I saw this okay. was, I think one or two years ago, uh -huh, around uh -huh. there. Yeah. Mm. This, this is looks like Express. Yeah. Ah, so <laughs> this middleware thingy is actually more for Express. Yeah. Uh -huh. So if you if you have programmed for Express before, where every middleware takes in the same request and response, right? right. You will be familiar with the concept of middleware. Yeah. I see. Of course, like some frameworks as well, like uh, for example, Laravel and Symfony, they have the middleware support as well. Uh, it's it's just, just, a, just yeah, yeah. It's a diff but it's a bit different from. Yeah, and of course, uh, we need to take into account that although you can as you can access the PSR seven object in Laravel, uh, technically Laravel does not follow any PSR. There was a saga yes, about this correct. as well. Mm. Uh, if you want to learn more, you can uh, you can access a uh, object, but like yeah, yeah, it's it's different. So let's do a quick quick uh detour into this. So what is PSR? PSR is uh, uh, PHP standards recommendation. Correct. <laughs> PHP standard recommendation. So we all these have different numbers. And PSR are there over here is talking about PHP HTTP messaging interfaces. So it lets different frameworks work with uh, certain like standards. So it help how different uh, different frameworks uh, work uh, interoperably. So that's why it is. It's is a PHP. Uh, started framework by this group uh, called the PHP FIG, PHP Framework Interop Group. So basically, uh, for people to uh, for people who use different frameworks to uh, or develop frameworks in PHP to be able to interop and 
build things that could be easily uh, to drag and drop or into uh, each of their own frameworks or rather if you look into certain frameworks you can find conventions that, have, that will be uh, that, that would uh, be transferable right uh, even uh, concepts that ch concepts that are transferable between uh, 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 PHP frameworks uh. so yeah so there are many numbers there so I think PHP PSR 7 is the one we see here you also see in the, the middle one is 15 uh, Seven is 15 right so let's go and find a PSR 15 where mm -hmm. are you PSRs so you can check the website you have a lot of different uh, PSRs here these are all the com accepted ones so there's a team there's a group that kind of like votes on this and uh, talks about this and these guys are all usually mostly like people who develop uh, frameworks in PHP uh, and uh, so basically and some of it has been uh, even surpassed by by newer PSRs. In the past, we had PSR zero, and then now that has been over uh, mm. overtaken by another one, which is the PSR four. four. If I'm not wrong. Yeah. yeah. So that's about auto loading. So there are also things that are in draft, and and there are things that are deprecated. Like for example, I just talked about auto loading standards, and, uh, and many others here. La. So these are the ones that has been accepted, and they're all quite easy to go through. And then you can also show, see examples in different uh, PHP frameworks. So what uh, Zion and and uh, we were talk about earlier is about how Laravel is it Laravel or Symphony Symphony right? Uh, Laravel decided to break away from PSP. Yeah, yeah. Laravel break from the PSP. So that's the concept idea for another <laughs> day to talk about. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, let's go back. Let's come back to Laminas, right? So what are the things are there in Laminas that we can use? Uh, the API tools are uh, <coughs> agility. So they have this thing where you. If you just do a configuration or something, then they can uh, so-called generate uh, all the all the APIs for you, cool. uh, which is quite oh. quite useful. And uh, also including documentation. Is it like Swagger? Uh, a bit like yes, a bit like. It. But you actually you actually create the PHP classes for you. I oh, think. interesting. So it creates the API uh, API uh, skeleton for you. Okay, cool. That's interesting. Mm. Nice. What's well, so other what other nice tools are there uh, here? This at uh, the moment, yeah. The rest is These all other components. Other yes. components, huh? Let's see yes, what's inside right. components. It's a very different monster from <laughs> the Zen framework I used back in uh. two thousand something. <laughs> anyway, cool. So yeah, I mean there's MVC, which is a MVC uh, uh, framework, and then there's the API tools, the components, Mesios, which is the uh, mm. middleware. Oh yeah, right. Previously it was expressive. Yeah. Can, yeah, you can. Yes, uh, uh, Zion definitely talked about that in previously. That's cool. That's cool. So, oh, and migration tools as well. Seems like fairly. There's like a Lego set. It's like a Lego oh, set of yeah. framework, yes. right? So you can just take and pick and Correct. choose the pieces that you like and kind of like put it all together, right? So actually, because uh, of PSR, right? So uh, even back then in two thousand twelve. They show how you can actually use components from Symfony framework and mix and match with uh, components from Zen framework all because of uh, PSR zero, which uh, Composer is based on. So, compo uh, so you write some library, you want it to be easily usable by other people or uh, other libraries. So you make it available via Composer. So Composer runs on PSR zero and four. So that, that's one example of how actually PSR is. Uh, mm -hmm. gave us a common language to interface to talk with. Yeah, I remember back in the day when I was like building my own, uh, I was building a web uh, application. So I was like, oh, instead of getting the, in, starting with Cake PHP or Laravel, let's just roll together some small libraries that could build my API server mm -hmm. with uh, and build. So that I could easily use, like I could use Composer and I just include a couple of packages from packages. And I uh, was able to do my own PHP uh, API, backend API, and I have a templating engine, and it was quite a few cool stuff. Like. You can mm -hmm. just put together yourself just just by just adding libraries and customizing it. And you can custom configure the whole thing to your, uh, your heart's content, right? like which yeah. folder to use, how to how to put. Like, there's, there's this is one, uh, <laughs> this is one that I like, like to use in the past, it's called the uh, PHP Active Record. I'm not sure whether it's still. Oh wow! Oh, I don't know whether anyone is using that. So let's check. Oh, it's dead. It's, uh, it's uh, maybe down. you can access the main website without the. Yeah, let's try that. Uh, is it still up? 
Yeah, so uh, PHP AR is kind of like one of my. Eh, is it correct? You saw the PHP AR? No, it doesn't look like it. No, can't see him. Active record. Doesn't look like this. this doesn't look like the right site, right website. But anyway, no, no. Uh, uh, show all four. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. I gotta move in a bit. Okay. Cool. Oh, so it doesn't seem to be the right. Oh. Seems since the site has been down already, <laughs> shit, okay. Active record, uh, that's the one that Rails use, right? Yeah, uh, it's like co yeah. the concept. I mean, the yes. active record, Laravel also. I don't know whether this one is still being maintained. Laravel should also use yeah, active yeah, record. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it? I think Laravel also, yeah, yeah, also, yeah, yeah, also use active recording. Oh, the, okay, they have Yeah, but the uh, Eloquent is, is based, based on, on active, active record. record. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so there's, I think there's two main patterns. One was active record, then the other... Repository pattern. Yes, repository mm. pattern. Ah, uh, yeah. so, okay. in, so in that, uh, in that spare, right, uh, unlike the other frameworks, uh, Zen framework actually doesn't purposely deliberate. Mm -hmm. uh, it did not enforce any particular model pattern. So active record repository pattern, it left it up to the uh, developer. Yeah. Which Say the pro or con. So in a way, like for example, for for Rears, uh, if you don't want to use the active record pattern, right? Uh, <laughs> mm. sorry lah. <laughs> <well, laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, you, you can't really choose. Whereas for Zen framework, you can choose. Okay, I want to use Doctrine. Doctrine uses the I think repository pattern. Mm -hmm. I think then uh, or you can use Eloquent and now ORM we uses the active record pattern. Yeah. So actually, you can yeah choose in a sense. Cool. So. Oh. Oh, it seems to be okay. This is the old site. Let's see if I can find the current site. Okay, fine. I think <laughs> it's bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so anyway, so yeah, this was way back in the day when I was in, so I was still doing uh, small APIs with uh, PHP. So yeah, I was able to like piece together things, you know, and then use this use use fun stuff like this. Oh. Yeah, back in the day. Anyway, so this is not the right one. Yes, too long ago. I don't think it's uh, yeah. The, the website went down. It was like yeah. I don't think anyone's maintaining it now. Shit, is that four ten, what, ten years ago? <laughs> Shit, wow, <laughs> ten wow. years ago. Okay, right, fine. Can Let's you move still away. run it now? I don't that's know, man. Question. Minimum. It should be five point three plus. So, but that's the minimum requirement. Minimum, uh, so maybe we go higher. Uh, uh, let's PHP try on uh, PHP eight. Uh. <laughs> maybe. Uh, let me get the, the door stopper. So anyway, uh, yeah. So that's. Or that's that's all we have about Laminas. If you have any questions about Laminas that you'd like to share with us, or some comments, uh, you can add add the comments in the, the the Telegram chat. If you have not added us, added us on uh, join us on Telegram. You can also join us uh, on our Facebook Live. I think we have a Facebook Live going on right now. Mm. Mm. How's this idea of Facebook Live? Is that all viewers? I'm not too sure. <laughs> anyway, we'll give it a try. Yeah. It's free anyway. So we just had another friend just join us. Hello, hello. hello. Hi. Hello, internet. Your name, la. Name, uh, and, uh, name, uh, name and name and. And I. Cool. Chill out. What did you do? Last. Yeah. Credit so card. I just finished NS. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. 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 So are you looking for a job? Ah, uh, yeah, looking for a job. So anyone yeah. out there looking for uh, PHP developers can find Chin Hao later. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so we're just uh, chit-chatting right now about uh, about uh, about Laminas, which is a uh, Zen uh, Zen framework. We kind of like broke away from from Zen and kind of like decided to continue developing under a different brand name. So it's interesting. I wonder because a lot of the Zen framework uh, stuff is using the ZF something ZF something, right? So yeah. are they going to use? Are they going to like move away from that? Namespace or, or what? Are they uh, I think they probably rename all the namespace. Really. I think <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. They even have a new logo. Yeah. Yeah, I have a new logo too. Okay, okay. okay. shall I move it? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Wow. You have John five of us. <laughs> okay. Not bad. Anyway. Cool. <coughs> okay. Cool. So uh, yeah. Um. Uh, so if we go rename everything, is like for everything is totally new for uh everything is gonna be totally new lah. So. Uh, I like to see how this goes, man. This is be interesting. This is like probably one of the newer, in a way, if you think of it as a rebranding, as a, a way of launching a new framework. I think it's also an interesting uh, thing to go. And um, I just hope that the team will continue to develop it and make it better. So it's already kind of like open source, yeah, it's uh, open source. product already, right? As, yes. in, as in a lot of uh, open source. It's not just dependent on the company's support anymore. 
Yeah, correct. So, uh, but it's also subject to your typical open source uh, project. Mm-hmm, so, it's mm-hmm. all the. You look at the GitHub, uh, you, you can, can see all the like, uh, <laughs> PHP active record. Uh, you, yeah, also can, yes. <laughs> That's just the worst case. Uh. Cool. But uh, one interesting thing would be the, the, the usage. Uh, so I was supposed, I'm not quite sure whether it's a, a, a region thing. You find that probably most of the contributors are from uh, the Western countries. Whereas for people over here, we are always fighting fire with uh, like our developers here and always trying to contribute to open source. Yeah. Um, that said, I know that uh, like for in Indonesia, the usage of PHP and uh, Zen framework is much higher, at least uh-huh, uh, uh-huh. more than probably Singapore and Malaysia. Uh, I know that Zalora and Zalora is using Zen framework. Oh, okay. Yeah, they were, they were using Zen framework. Yeah. Cool. So, so now we're gonna talk about. Let's segue a little bit from there. And we'll talk a little bit about PHP in 2020. This is the second article that yeah. uh, Zion shared with us, right? Which is this uh, article from uh, Brent uh, Stitcher. Stitcher. Brent Stitcher. So he's talk, he talks about PHP 2020. Kind of like, uh, in a way, it's a way of like telling people, hey, PHP is still, is still relevant. Especially now that we've moved away from the PHP 5 legacy days, PHP 7 and PHP 8 is the next version coming out at the end of 2020. So like, it's already way gone way beyond that, and then there's some of, the, and it's kind of like summarizing all the all the new things that's been happening in the, in the PHP world that still that kind of tells, tells the world, hey, PHP is still relevant. PHP is still uh, in active use and in active development, right? So, uh, and yeah, so a lot of things they talk about like PHP now has a type system. Like one of the main complaints people have about, uh, about PHP is that there was no type system. So you can like, kind of like how JavaScript is like today. How, how TypeScript is... <laughs> it's a super set of JavaScript, right? So it's like... <laughs> so yeah, so like, you know how a type system, especially when you see a, uh, a application uh, code base grow really huge. Mm. The last thing you want to do is to pass the wrong parameters and pass, pass the wrong data type into arguments and you end up breaking the whole system, right? So having a type system saves you from, uh, prevents you from doing stupid things like that. Lah. So, and then of course, mm-hmm. and then they talk about how uh, in the past there has been, uh, and, and how now PHP 7 onwards has, has types. Actually types was introduced even earlier, right? Not even, was it? Yes, there were types. Five. Five yes, uh, PHP 5 for classes, you can add that for array. Yeah. You can add that, but not for the rest, like yeah. your yeah. integer, your string. Yeah, those, those are more types. like type hinting, wasn't it? It's like type hinting. Uh, right? There's but also it's, like... It's not, it's not forced, it's not enforced, I really remember. Enforced. There's like, even before that, we also have like the PHP doc. You use PHP doc to annotate the types. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh. in, uh, in your PHP storm, if you use PHP storm, if you have annotated the types using your uh, PHP doc, you can... It will just help you with your auto completion mm-hmm. and stuff. That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. So doc blocks are always been there, and then IDEs as we all always been able to uh, 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 did that. And then now is uh, now is the next step, which is to uh, to also make make the code make the make the, the code itself enforce the type safetyness, right? Which is yes. nice. Yeah. So what else is there? So they talk about also have having uh, static analysis tools like SAM, PyPen, and PHP Stand. Uh, to kind of like uh, help you uh, check your code as well, which is kind of nice. So, are you guys already using uh, stuff like this in your production code? Mm. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, um, uh, but, I've, uh, but I've never used type to property, class mm. property. Oh, okay. From, uh, which is introduced from PHP 7.4. Oh, okay. Uh, I've been using for a while. Uh, it's I've not like it's not a really big change like mm-hmm. it's not enforced on you like uh, like oh you must write it so like yeah, uh, yeah. it's kind of flexible <coughs> in mm-hmm. that sense so whether or not you actually do it or not is another thing cool ah yes and of course the blog itself also talked about how yeah uh, yeah how we did like PHP dot blocks dot blocks yeah, dog blocks, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's always been helpful. I like I like that uh, yeah. dog blocks you can like auto auto suggest. 
Yeah. And, and uh, gives you types. Mm. Uh, uh, it's kind of like the documentation mm. for your code. It is, it is a documentation after all. <laughs> all right. Page, 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 page seven. Spaceship operator. Yeah. So yeah. I think there has been a bit more concerted effort. Yes. Right. The best one. It's the second one, which is the now no coalescing, coalescing operator. Nice. You know, it's like, wow, you've been, I've been waiting for that for, for ages. This was like, oh, wow. Right. So before, uh, previously, right, if you want to do something to replace this, you have to say, if it's set uh, object property, uh, then return object property, else return the default value. Yeah. Hello. Good morning, business. Hello, we're, we're, we're called the podcast. <laughs> Trying to record the podcast. Yeah, so this one actually saves a lot of effort. Uh, <laughs> yes, correct. What is the question mark and then the colon one? That one was the question mark and colon is the ternary. Uh, is uh, the if else one? If else. That one was yeah. available earlier. Yes, earlier. Uh, was earlier. Uh, also, earlier. Uh, then this one was later. One, later. This was right. only one minor version. Later. This one. Okay. So the so the ternary operator, the question mark and the colon mm -hmm. is like um if uh, if this value is empty, uh, non-empty, then take the first value and else take the second value. Yeah. But there's yeah. a problem if the property does not exist in the array <coughs> or, or the object. Uh, yeah. So for this now coalescing, uh, the double question mark, so if the property or the array index key does not exist, right, mm. your program will not crash. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this, this, this is very important. So actually, uh, mm. yeah, it, it was a kind of lifesaver. I see. But okay. has PHP introduced a what's it called? It's no, no my, my, I'll, 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 I'll say sure. I'll say it once okay. I oh, I remember what it is. So now coalescing and we have this structuring which is kind of nice and mm. what else is that? Uh, array spreading. Mm. Wow. The okay. Spread operator. The spread operator. Yeah. yeah. I know mm -hmm. there's this in uh, ES6, JavaScript, yeah. JavaScript ES6, yeah, but yeah. I think ES, ES6 got it for, from somewhere else. Mm. It wasn't just something that was thought of by... Was it Bash? <laughs> no, Bash. I, I, <laughs> <don't know. laughs> I have been. Oh, okay. So, variadic mm -hmm. functions. So, yeah, I like that there's been a bit, lot more thought uh, put into uh, uh, think, thinking about how to implement the functions, right? And then the, 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 the mm -hmm. syntax is a lot more modern i like it i like this one more modern you see keeping in the times unpacking type uh, short closures one of them as error well function. Mm -hmm. uh, error functions uh, yeah so ah, it's nice. like a uh, equals yeah, yeah. yeah. So short closures uh, function like blah, and then but it only supports one one liner right it doesn't oh. support multiple lines it doesn't okay, yeah. okay. It doesn't. it's a yeah. short closures short closures uh, okay. you also have your standard Closure, which is anonymous mm -hmm. functions. Anonymous functions, okay. Generators. And generators. <laughs> okay, wow, it's a lot of things. So, yeah, a lot of uh, interesting things. And of course, PHP uh, 7 has a lot of better performance. I remember they, they uh, um, the creator of PHP also talked about how in PHP 7 they basically compensate for all the bad coding practices people have. And try to optimize for for the performance on your on mm. badly written code. But the main thing was the syntax tree, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, great. Uh, the the uh, EST abstract syntax, mm. syntax tree mm. that has changed. Yeah. So actually, um, when PHP seven was just released, uh, if you just use PHP seven without changing any of the application code, right, you could go get at least uh or up to twice the speed performance. So for mm -hmm. example, probably uh, previously it takes uh, uh, two seconds to run, now it takes only one second to run. So mm -hmm. that was a very huge boost for for PHP. Yeah. Cool. And of course, like, if it takes lesser time to run, your carbon footprint will be lesser. <laughs> <laughs> right, there, there was, also true. Who, who was it that tweeted that like, if like everyone on the web was to change from five to seven, like we'll be reducing a, a lot of uh, carbon footprint. That's true. Yeah. That's true. All right. Let's click going further. They have talked about frameworks and ecosystems. Uh, so much more mature frameworks out there, and of course, how you can use packages as way uh, as a way of finding uh, composer packages that can just 
uh, put mm. into your application. I think Composer is a really a lifesaver for how to create mm, yeah. uh, dependency management and version management of, of all your dependencies. So yeah, it's a lot of uh, improvements in the PHP world, right? And it's like, mm. even, uh, who knows, in PHP 8, uh, there might be even more new things that's coming. Oh, uh, right? yes. In we closing, it talks about, yeah? We can talk about the RSCs. <laughs> sure, sure. So, <laughs> right, so that's, so that's cool, cool, cool stuff to know. It's like, uh, it feels a lot like that. Remember that we had there was this uh, uh, post last time about PHP, the good stuff, the good parts of something like that. The PHP, ah, I think uh, so. What was that? It was a post about the PHP, the good, the, all the all the good practices and everything. Which is uh, so this tells you a little lot about that as well, which is nice. All right, cool. Uh, so that's the second thing we talk about. The third thing we're gonna talk about is uh, is about. Uh, this guy RFCs RFCs okay so, so yeah uh, sure tell us a bit about what, what RFC is so RFC stands for request for command mm. right request for commands <laughs> yeah so I've linked some of the RFC in the telegram group but uh, let's not look at the ones in the telegram group yet I'm gonna start it off with a bit of quiz and some questions first some discussion first so uh, in arrays, right, we there's two types of arrays, right? Uh, in different programming languages, some start with zero, some start with one, right? For example, in Lua, you start the array with one, and for PHP, you start in zero. But of course, in PHP, you can also change the default in the engine, uh, the the dot init file. You can actually change it to start from one, or, or start from some other numbers as well. But it's like, uh, okay, so let's. A show of hands, who thinks that an uh, array should start from zero? Everyone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, who thinks array should start from one? Uh, no mathematicians oh, here? <laughs> oh man. So usually, uh, why, why Lua starts from one is because it's like, it's uh, very closely related to mathematics. So yeah, there, there's like some uh, argument about, oh, you know, you should, uh, array should start at zero instead of one and stuff like that. So I, I've, I've worked with Lua quite a bit uh, in the past few months and it was surprising like how strong in the element of math it was. So um, le let me raise uh, another question that is related to PHP. So uh, if you have a PHP array, then I assign, you know like how like an array in PHP you can have the key and the value, right? So if I set the key as negative 4, then by logic, what should be the next key? Can it, does anyone know? Make a guess. Negative three. Yeah. Okay. Negative three. Negative negative three. three. Yeah, I think negative three. Negative three. Negative three. The answer is is zero. Oh. Oh. Okay. So we have this brand new RFC called the uh, array starting with a uh, negative index, which dated which dates from a. Uh, 2007 April the 20th mm -hmm. okay it's it's a while back ago so but in uh, the proposal is that is to change uh, change it to be, be not like what you all of you here have expected like it should be negative 3 right yeah so I've actually just tested it uh, early on and yes this this was actually quite shocking to me <coughs> as well it's, mm. it's not just <laughs> no, not just everyone here so uh this will be in PHP 8.0. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, quite fantastic, isn't it? Cool. Yeah. So is there any way to actually have this behavior right now, like some uh, polyfill <laughs> um, or something? Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, I don't think. Damn it. Well, you could manually go and set. <laughs> 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 like uh, yeah. <laughs> so just just curious. Uh, so actually, what's the what led to the behavior? Was it because minus four was treated as a string key? No, it's, it's no. Uh, uh, well, or is it really something deep down in the internals? <laughs> I have no idea because like they didn't really talk about it here, right? Uh, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> It wasn't really mentioned here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, if uh, you have an array, 
-hmm. and you will set a string key, let's say, uh, let's say uh, alpha, uh, key alpha, the value is, let's say, 456. Mm -hmm. ah, so uh, we look at the next uh, we'll uh, index zero. Will, will be zero. Yeah. So I know Kershaw sure negative 4 because I don't know probably they cast yeah. it to it's two characters. So this this one don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. On the side note, uh, why most arrays uh, start with zero right? is uh, probably this is back to C days where it's uh, memory management. So the why is another topic for another day. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, yeah, so RFCs are a really uh, cool way to, for the for the core core contributors to kind of engage the community in terms of like, oh, what do you think are like ideas that they would, they would like to introduce in 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 the language, right? Which is mm -hmm. kind of nice. So what are what are the cool RFCs so that you have you found, man? The next one is the just in time. Just in time. Okay. Let's yeah. So there are different kind of uh, methods which you can compile stuff uh, ahead of time just in time and there's one more or like a few more right so we in uh there's a proposal that was up like for some time ago that was to introduce just in time compilation in php mm. right so there was an uh <coughs> there was sort of an extension made available for php uh 7.2 or 7.4 ish 7.4 Point four, right? So uh, there was a like the they wanted to do this already. So uh, just in time, right? Compilation would optimize like repeated code execution. Mm. But if you use it just if you are using PHP just for web requests, you won't see a and much improvement. I wouldn't. There there should not be much improvement or probably no improvement at all, mm. right? Because it doesn't like, affect you if you are just running web requests because it just terminates at the end of the request right whereas if you were to do it for some other things like let's say you want to use it for data science purposes mm -hmm. like there was the demonstration done in last uh, two years ago two years ago right in our in a PHP conference uh, one of the people demonstrated how to use PHP for machine learning mm -hmm. and the thing was fun was it fun or like some some something right so uh, if it's particularly of interest for machine learning and or anything that does a lot of repeated executions, uh, let's say you want to do some calculations or some stuff, right? Yeah. So, any of you all here do machine learning? <laughs> no. Uh, most machine learning nowadays, like probably they use Python. Yeah. So yeah. some they run probably some long running tasks in the server in the background, but probably using Python. Uh, probably one reason is because uh, the Python libraries are already there. Uh, but if this J uh, JIT comes about for PHP, right, you uh, make PHP uh, more accessible, a uh, more like go to language if you want to try uh, uh, to run like low running jobs in, in the background. So, like for some people, they like to use the same language for everything, like uh, <coughs> JavaScript and Swift. Uh, <laughs> Uh, they want to use it in the backend, so they adapted it for backend for server side. So PHP has always been server side, but that said, it's been more used for web applications and requests. And requests, as we all know, are stateless, uh, as it's a state for PHP uh, HTTP. So having it uh, for JIT will help to increase its performance on the CLI side and on uh, yeah. the real server, no UI, no requests. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, I think it would be good for like long running, long running processes and, and stuff like that. Right? Yeah, cool. can yeah. Yeah, let's look at the next one as well. I think we uh, also talk weak, about weak, weak, map. weak maps. Uh, yeah. So this one is uh, so you have <coughs> weak maps in JavaScript as well. Uh, it's in one of the ES version. I forgot which one. So uh, weak. Why is there a need for weak maps? Is is of particular interest, right? So. Right now, right, if you ask the garbage collector to right, to collect garbage, right, if it's unreferenced, it will be picked up. If it's something that's been referenced to, they won't garbage collect it, right? But if you if you make a weak reference like this one, a weak map, in this case is a weak map, the garbage collector will st will still go and collect up. Uh, will go and clean this weak reference up, right? So by 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 default your references stay as is, but this is a weak reference. So, uh, 
this weak map allows it to be cleaned up. So what what kind of areas will be be particularly of interest? Like for example, your ORMs. This mm -hmm. would be something that would be of interest to ORMs, where they can catch something, mm -hmm. but when there's a limited amount of resources and this resource needs to be released, right? The garbage collector say, oh, this time around when I want to pick up garbage, I'll go and pick up the weak references as well. So then the garbage collector will see, oh, there's this uh, uh, weak map here that I previously didn't collect because I wasn't out of memory or out of resources. So this time around, I'm going to collect it and it will mm -hmm. be gone. And then uh, it doesn't affect the ORM. Like it, uh, in terms of execution, it still executes, but maybe it's slower now. But you have already run out of resources, so that's why it's doing the garbage collection and stuff. I see. Right. So this is uh, quite an interesting move as well. Uh, as for weak references, weak references was introduced in 7.4. Mm -hmm. So it's not particularly a very new thing. Just that now there's uh, even more in depth thing for this week now. So, what are your thoughts on this? What's everyone's thought on this week map? Uh, you should you'll probably come across uh, so called weak references uh, if you are coding like in uh, Swift. So, mm -hmm. you sometimes you mark something as a week or something oh, like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, this would be this would be interesting. Uh, so she again. Uh, if you good, if you're going to run a uh, long running process, right? I say that uh, when JIT comes yeah, to PHP, yeah. right? This will come in useful as ah, well. Ah yes, mm. yes. Very cool. Any comment? Yeah, uh, I'm interested in how garbage collector uh, decide these references weak or not. How to pr prioritize the so weakness. <laughs> Uh, that I'm, I'm, okay. So how do they know if it's a weak reference? Uh, yeah, yes. How do they know it's a weak reference? I don't know how the garbage collector works. Of unfortunately, yeah. uh, uh, do you know, know the, how? The, like the most, the most basic type of garbage collection, the type of uh, algorithm is uh, by reference counting. Yeah. Uh, so let's say uh, uh, I, I I tie a string to uh, to to Hui Ren. So, uh, so uh, let me see. Uh, so, and then after that, uh, let's say, uh, Jing Hao ties a string to Hui Ren. So, actually, now two people are using Hui Ren, uh, have a string tied to Hui Ren. So, Hui Ren has a reference count of two. So, let's say when the garbage man comes around, right, uh, can I <laughs> pick up Hui Ren and throw it away? Cannot, because he has two strings tied uh, to him. Yeah, yeah. So, let's say Hui Ren, uh, Jing Hao decided, okay, uh, Okay, I don't need Hui Ren anymore, let's count the string. Then uh, Hui Ren has a reference count of one. Uh, garbage man comes again, can throw him away or cannot. So after that, uh, I finish talking with Hui Ren, right? I cut off the string. So now no Hui Ren has a reference count of zero. Mm -hmm. Nobody is talking to Hui Ren anymore, right? The garbage yeah. man comes along and says, uh, hey, nobody talking to you, right? You are not needed anymore, right? We don't have enough chairs. Mm -hmm. Okay, you ping up, throw in the dustbin, and then that's it. So the chair is free for someone else to sit. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, one of the most basic algorithms for garbage collection. So uh, weak re reference could be say that uh, uh, if you only left with one, one, uh, I can just throw you away. So uh, some kind of paraphrasing. So you can mark it as uh, his, uh, even if someone is talking to him, he's not important. You can throw him out anytime. Yeah, so probably we, we, we map can be uh, paraphrased to this. Uh. Yeah. Ooh. So, uh, as for garbage collector, uh, in PHP 7.3, there was an improvement in the garbage collection or how the cycles work. Right. Uh, so, let me see what I wrote previously. I forgot what I wrote previously. Um, Basically, there. <laughs> okay, um, while he's fi while he's finding yeah. right, uh, so usually garbage collection is quite expensive. Uh, if you were to run something like Java, whenever garbage collection uh, happens, right, you can see what spike. Uh, yeah, some suddenly your whole application might just stall. So garbage collection is uh traditionally quite an expensive an uh, operation, which you don't want to happen too many times. But you need to time it so that you have. 
enough resources, memory left to run the rest of the application. Mm -hmm. So uh, in some uh, other languages, like for example Java, which just recently removed mark and sweep uh, oh. garbage collection in their latest Java version. It was like completely removed. And like in some engine like V8 or in uh, Chakra, uh, Chakra oh. and V8, one of them they use mark and sweep. Uh, one, the other uses uh, stop the wall, ah, stop the wall right. kind of garbage collection. And for PHP, it uses a cyclic garbage collector. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which uh, which does, which all of them are like their, their way of doing garbage collection is different as well. So for um, mark and sweep, generally if it's a smaller program, is better but if your program is very huge uh, mark and sweep is not very good for that case um, then for stop the wall i'm not very certain about stop the wall and cyclic garbage collector as well yeah so this uh this kind of stuff in uh, garbage collection has been of like uh under some spotlight in <laughs> PHP 7.3 yeah. and also under PHP 8.0 with uh, and also in 7.4 when weak references was introduced mm -hmm. so all this stuff were like this like because PHP is constantly trying to look at how it can improve further improve in performance and that's why in 8.0 to expand the number of uh, things that PHP is gonna be performing in there was the introduction of JIT I like that the last few changes that are being suggested are kind of like performance tunings. I think I see the same trend along with uh, other languages like Ruby, right? For example, I use Ruby as well. The last few versions have been really, really much about performance tuning and improving the garbage collection. Like we have one, one guy who I uh, he, he he came to Singapore for the Radar Ruby conference and he just spoke just about garbage collection. Wow. Yeah, yeah, his name is GitHub handle is called Tenderlove. So yeah, it is uh yeah, he's a core contributor to to, to Rails as well as Ruby. And but but you see, so it's kinda of like you know that in other languages they are also quite very concerned about this, like, you know, like how how to uh, how to improve the performance of epic of the of the of the language. I guess everyone's chasing after <laughs> Go yeah. Golang right now, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Ras Golang. Ras uh, Golang, you know, like well anyway, uh Interpreted languages still has a lot of uh, uh, it has many has still a lot of its uh, strengths. Like you know how how easy it is to just read the code and then uh, compilation time. There's no compilation time at all. You know how easy how easy it is to just in, uh, to deploy a application that is, that is just interpreted, right? So mm -hmm. um, yeah. All right. So there's one last one which uh, Query has found, which is the uh, uh, class colon colon class on objects. Yeah. Tell us a bit more about this one. So this one is uh, particularly <coughs> interesting. It's kind of similar to the first, uh, first one where you know in arrays you expect number four, uh, negative four, then followed by negative three. Then as for this, there's some by intuition you expect uh, your variable uh, colon colon class to return your, to return your class name, right? Um, but uh, that doesn't happen, right? We have to do uh, reflections in order to get the class name. Right? So in order to uh, fix this uh, counter intuition, uh, there's this thing that was uh, vote open for voting in best in January, and it got a complete, what is it called? Un anonymous? Uh, 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 unanimous. <laughs> unanimous, yes. Unanimous uh, <laughs> vote for approval. <laughs> Right. Nice. Yeah, so this was just voted in and the voting will close in February, mid February ish, then that's when it will get it'll be confirmed to be in PHP eight point zero. So the the thing is it's targeted for PHP eight point zero. But that and it's been voted for eight point zero. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it will definitely be 8.0 until the voting closes and after some time. I see. Where I see. all the everything, all the logistics and stuff has been decided fully. Cool. Right, so it's not confirmed to be 8.0, but it's 
expected to be 8.0 voter mm -hmm. completed as well Vo voting in the process yeah you can see the date it closes in uh, uh, 11 11 next week. yeah wow. next week but everyone is really voting for years all right so yeah. it's like uh so on this list you have the core contributors as well as these are people on the internals internals right yeah okay. uh so mm, yeah. I, i'm not very sure like what their individual yeah. uh, contribution activity are it's probably more than me <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, that's that's a no-brainer for sure <laughs> i like you really the kid <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah right. it's very nice. I like this. I like how the community comes together to go in. If they feel that they want to do something good for the community and kind of like put their heads together and say, yes, let's do this, right? Which is kind of nice. So that hope their spirit of open source and how, you know stuff like that. Cool. Any any anything else you like to share with us? Mm -hmm. How about let's go around one one one, one last round among all the. All the People have who are here in this in this chat. Like you have one PHP tip you like to share with us. <laughs> Focus on developer discipline, not <laughs> developer <laughs> tools. Okay, uh, cool. yeah, I've been I've been saying that for a lot for the past year and recently. So it doesn't matter uh, how good the programming language is or how good your tool or your editor is. If you don't have the discipline, if you don't take time to design your architecture or your mm -hmm. software, right, mm -hmm. you will still end up in a mess. Yeah. yeah. Which is, you know, uh, you uh, return good things to the world. <laughs> yeah. Any, mm. Anything you stumbled across recently that was like really interesting or PHP related things like at, at work or even. Mm. Yes. Uh, Actually, uh, since I came to Singapore, I've I've not been using PHP so much, mm -hmm. <laughs> unfortunately. So, um, uh, <laughs> I like a T-shirt. Lar Laracon I, EU. Uh, yeah, last La year, Laracon. I joined Laracon EU. Wow, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. And I had a I gave gave a talk. Oh. Yeah. So. Very nice. So I hope I can use. Uh, PHP Laravel <laughs> again in Singapore. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah, so I, I hope this community grows more, more and more. That's good. Yeah. That's good. How are you heard any interesting? Oh uh, yeah. Visits? So uh, on the note, uh, I think the one of the ways which we can all contribute to PHP will be uh, through documentation. Uh -huh. Yeah. So the last, <laughs> the last documentation I found was uh, last year. Oh. I forgot when I think it's in the July, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think Pasindo gave a talk about how to contribute, and he still, uh, he still has the access to approve the uh, changes and stuff. Like uh, so, usually when I when I make a contribution and all that, uh, it needs to go through approval and stuff. So I I would ping him to go and uh, look at my contribution and approve my documentation contribution. So right now um we are up we are on uh, eight point zero, right? We are going towards eight point zero. So I think most of the documentation should be complete but uh some might still not be complete yet. Right? If you look at the PHP source uh PHP dash source on GitHub or GitHub whichever you prefer. Uh you like I think it's github.com or github.com slash php uh, slash php dash dash src should be this I think is it, is it? come on please be yeah so it's this one right uh, you can look at the upgrading there's the upgrading md file right so uh, usually although the things are stated in the upgrading uh, like it's right below readme yeah so although the things are stated in upgrading it's uh it might not be reflected onto the website yet so usually that has to be done manually right and that's that's where you can help to contribute right uh sometimes you need some c knowledge uh but it's not particularly in-depth c knowledge that you'll be required for and of course a lot sometimes you 
Google for like things and you might not get the result as well like there was once which I tried finding something I had to search for a few hours to finally be able to find out what this thing was right be because like you, you couldn't find it elsewhere like I had to take a lot of time to search so sometimes you encounter these kind of roadblocks and those kind of roadblocks are where uh, usually people leave it out and not contribute to it yet so <laughs> yeah those those areas are very good for contribution Cool. Yeah, he's the one by you, right? Very cool. Oh, oh, oh! He added this. In. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, Is yeah. Is it? Yeah. He was. He's showing the patch oh. that uh, Passing Lou added yeah. for me. Like, nice. You can see the email is like. Yes, yeah, guys. Along <laughs> then my email there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can we see it? Is it? Uh, is you it? can send to the Telegram. Uh, wow. Yeah, is it send to the Telegram? Wow. Uh, wow. Uh, Telegram. Telegram. Oh, into the meetup page or you want? That's easier. Oh, oh. just PM me. <laughs> Up to you. Okay, meetup page. Okay. Yes, okay, meet okay. Yeah, meetup page. Yeah, it's there. Mm. <gasps> what? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Uh, look. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, this one. Nice. So yeah, you can see my email is there. Uh, then Pasindo helped me to edit, and this was in early Feb twenty nineteen. Yes, mm -hmm. early Feb twenty nineteen. So one year ago. So wow. if you do search the PHP dots right, you actually see uh this thing being reflected. Nice. Yeah. So I can say I did that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. Right. And you can also after you contributed. <laughs> <laughs> Can can. Jin Hao, any um, any comments from you or any ideas? Uh no. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. Uh no, I don't. Know. Okay, can. Sorry. Right. So yeah, the uh, I I I, <laughs> I wish I had more time to do more PHP. So yes, I, I wish I had more time, in, uh, more hours in the in the day to do PHP. So yes. <laughs> so I have. Um, cool. That's all we have for the first episode of our podcast recording. I hope you guys like. Uh, the video and uh, we'll try and put this on audio as well and we'll try to publish it as soon as we can but yeah we'll try to hope we hope to do this uh, once a month and maybe more people can join us in this small little group so we have five here let's just aim for ten <laughs> in the next round when we do this so yes uh, ch uh, ch check us out on meetup.com go look for the Singapore PHP user group you can find our, our meetup page there and we'll also share or publish our next uh, uh, schedule as well and of course we're always open to suggestions please uh, uh, you go to the media page you'll find a link to add new topics and suggestions so we're always on look out for new ideas and thanks again for Zion and Hui Ren for uh, pulling together all the topics for the discussion for today mm -hmm. and I uh, hope you can uh, have more of this next time and that's how the how the uh, uh, audio podcast is like give us uh, some feedback uh, we're also on Twitter you can find us at at PHP Singapore I think Yes, <laughs> right. PHP Singapore. Huh? PHP Singapore, I can't remember. <laughs> yes, I think so. Uh... Yeah, at PHP Singapore. So find us on Twitter at PHP, at, at PHP Singapore and uh, give us a shout out there. Right? Cool. And that's uh, all we have. Say goodbye, guys. Bye. Bye.